Fire, not exactly a deck uh, that uh, a card that Merfolk wants to have to deal with. Very few answers to the to the card, especially game one. They do have four copies of Wasteland to sort of break up the Grove of the Burn Willows, but again, Jund has a lot of removal that is very effective against the fragility of Merfolk. Yeah. And so we do see both players are underway here. William Pearson beginning with the Badlands and passing the turn back. As Derek's going to take his turn, we're just going to look at some of the different cards in his Merfolk deck list. Um, you know, a lot of fours here with the Curse Catchers, Lord of Atlantis, and all that good stuff. But two copies of Phantasmal Image, two Dismembers, only two copies of Days, and he's found room for three Spell Pierce and three Standstill, as you're going to see a Dark Confidant here from Pearson. Yeah, and Pearson's playing a fairly stock list, uh, a, a less, um, not exactly the same as someone like a Pat Cox or Josh Ravis who made top eight of the Legacy Grand Prix uh, playing Reed Duke's list. Mm -hmm. He does have four copies of Blood Raid Up where some of those lists were only playing three. Uh, has the Goyf, the Confidence, and the Deathrite Shamans. And his removal package is four Punishing Fire, obviously, three Lightning Bolt, two copies of Abrupt Decay. And he also has four Liliana the Veil, which aren't great in this matchup, but they're, they're actually not, they're, they're fine game one, especially if you're on the play. Uh, he also has one copy of Sylvan Library, which a lot of players are running and four copies of Thoughtseize and two Hymphatora okay. as hand disruption. Sure. So you do see Deathrite Shaman is the card that's turned over there for Pearson that goes to his hand. There is a Graven Cairns, and you see also in his hand, you see a Punishing Fire, you see a Grove of the Burn Willows as well. So he already has the uh, combo, for lack of a better term mm -hmm. here, already set up against Smith. And we are going to see maybe a him. Okay, yeah. so we're going to see Punishing Fire right Once now. Wants to get that Lord out of the way. Slow rolling the Grove a little bit, so he can at least make sure he gets an activation mm -hmm. back from it. Uh, hasn't seen a wasteland yet, but he has a wasteland of his own. So uh, Derek does have a Mutavolt in his hand, so that's one of the few wasteland targets that are in the deck. You see Derek also has two copies of Wasteland and that Dismember in his hand. He also has a Force of Will and a Meryl Regery, and right now he's considering the ramifications of, all right, if I Force of Will removing my Regery here, I want to leave, you know, it's going to counter this. And I, he has to wonder, does Pearson actually have a Grove of the Burn Willows yet? Alternatively, he would like his Lords to be 3-3s three and work with each other instead of being 2-2s, mm -hmm. which is why you do see the main face Punishing Fire right now. This is a hard spell to counter because when someone actually plays a Punishing Fire, you know they have Grove in their deck. So countering it is very counterintuitive. Yes, but you could be in a situation where, okay, I have two um, uh, Wastelands, so I can kind of hurt his mana a little bit. And if he does draw the Grove of the Burn Willows, I have a Wasteland for it anyway. Sure. So maybe I just counter it here, play my second Lord, and try to control the board that way. But I think it's a little greedy, especially because his other blue card was a Lord yeah. that he had to pick. So yeah. not really much you can do there. And maybe if he had that Lord of Atlantis in his hand as well that he's just drawn, it makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. But because he just did top deck one, as you see him play that Mutavolt, it would have been hard to pull the trigger on that and, and you know have things work out his way. Mm -hmm. And not really showing his hand yet with the Wastelands, mm -hmm. no need to play them out yet. Happy with just playing a Rougerie. Again, William is slow rolling, so to speak, the uh, Grow the Burn Willows, so Derek isn't aware that William already has that half of his combo. And the nice thing here is he does turn over Liliana Veil. Yes, he does take three damage, but and he does draw another Punishing Fire. He can actually keep slow rolling this, slam down a Liliana, neg to it, and you know, still keep slow rolling that uh, that Grove of the Burn Willows, provided he does have another land. Doesn't have, doesn't have to expose it just yet. No, I like I like actually trying for the Liliana here. I think this is where his turn begins. Yeah. And so you do see Liliana in the veil here, just looking to first take care of a Regery and then start taking up and attacking Derek's hand. Yeah, Derek's going to be in a tough spot here. He doesn't really want to let it to resolve, but can he really afford to pitch a Lord to get a Force of mm -hmm. Will? Basically the same situation we were in last turn. Exactly. You know, can he forcible here? He didn't forcible last time. And this is part of the matchup. And this, uh, this matchup is very, very good for Punishing John for multiple reasons. Dark Confidant, Liliana Veil, vale, Punishing Fire plus Grove of the Burn Willows. But also there are a million cards that you're going to see a forcible remove Lord of Atlantis that Smith actually does need a forcible. There's so many cards that he just wants to counter. And you don't want to play forcible against this Jun deck. One for one in here is not good. That's what they want to do. Yeah, Merfolk really shine against decks like Control and Combo where you can get cheap, efficient threats into play and then use your permission to sort of slow them down or stop a key spell so you can win the game that way. Whereas a deck like Jund, Jund really doesn't care about that stuff. It has a lot of very efficient removal spells, cards like Abrupt Decay, which Derek just can't even counter. Yep. So Derek can never really mount, uh, mount uh, a really good offense to sort of take control of the game. And so we're going to see a Wasteland here from Pearson. Going to take out Derek's Bayou. Might maybe see him pull the trigger now on this Curse Catcher, which we do. But we'll probably see Pearson pull the trigger now on 
the Grove of the Burn Willows as he's going to turn over a thought seize here mm -hmm. with Dark Confidant. And I, I think Derek might uh, have considered maybe dismembering the Deathrite Shaman simply because if you have your Wastelands, maybe you want to sort of keep him off mana a little bit. Um, he did miss a land drop last turn, so it might not have been unreasonable, but maybe he's saving it just for a Tarmogoy for uh, eventually maybe getting rid of the Dark Confidant, but you figure he would have gotten the rid, rid of Dark Confidant already. Yeah, I mean, which one do you want to dismember there? Both yeah. of them are very good targets for dismember. You can make arguments for both, which is, you know, again, what makes it kind of difficult on, on the Merfolk side. So there's the signature card, Grove of the Burned Willows, the one we've been talking about. For those of you who don't know, we'll bring it up for you. Basically, it's a red-green land that it can tap for red or green mana. Every time it does tap for red or green mana, though, your opponent gains a life, which interacts really favorably with the Punishing Fire, because Pun Punishing Fire states, if it's in your graveyard, if your opponent gains a life, you can pay a red to return it. Mm -hmm. So, very good interaction. I believe the first time we kind of saw that interaction was at Pro Tour Austin, yep. where Brian Kibler played it in his Naya deck, along with Ben Rubin, yep. on his way to winning that Pro Tour. Yeah. Really good deck at that tournament. Too. Yeah, very, very good deck. Punishing Fire, so powerful that they eventually had to ban it. Yeah. Just because uh, a little too powerful and kind of invalidated a lot of strategies, yeah. just like Merfolk. Yeah, it's strange to even imagine banishing this two mana burn spell. Yeah. But it, it was that. I mean, in combination with Grow the Burn Wells, it did, it did invalidate a lot of decks. It, and you see it kind of invalidating this deck in Legacy. Yeah, and it wasn't just Naya. Like, a lot of decks were playing it. There was a, a Gifts and the Given deck that was playing it as well, because you can cast Gifts and Given targeting. Uh, a Life from the Loam, a Grove of the Burn Wills, and a Punishing Fire, and suddenly you just have your combo. Yep. As we see him, the Torak, on the stack here from Pearson, targeting Derek. He's going to dismember, pay the four life via Phyrexian mana, and we're going to see here the him take out the last two cards, uh, last single card, oh, excuse me, wow. which is a Wasteland to take care of the Grove of the Burn Wills. Deathrite Shaman, I think we're going to see some mana maybe. Yep, he's going to take care of a Muta Vault. Here he comes tapping for mana, and we're going to see a very large Tarmogoyf now. So unfortunately, William's uh, him to Tarak took out the Wasteland, which Derek was planning on using on the Grove of Burnwell. Mm -hmm. So Punishing Fire now free to come back whenever William decides it's fine to. And so they check the size of that Tarmogoyf. We'll get Tarmogoyf dice out there. Just a 5-6. No mm -hmm. big. 5-6, two, 2 drop. No big deal. Nah. Well, it doesn't do anything besides a 5-6. Yeah. As Derek does draw an island, and we can see Pearson's hand at home. We know about the Grove of the Burn Willows. We know about the Punishing Fire both in the graveyard and in play. And Derek can't attack. Tarmogoy standing tall. And now those uh, those fishies are going to get lit up by fire. Wow. So now he has a second copy of Grove of the Burn Willows in his hand. Along to go with that second copy of Punishing Fire. So yeah. this game could be over relatively quickly if Derek doesn't start drawing some gas here. Yeah. But again, there's not much gas in Derek's deck that's capable of dealing with a 5-6 Tarmogoy let alone the Grove, uh, Punch and Fire combo. Yeah, I mean, this game isn't over as far as Derek being at zero, but it's essentially over. There's no coming back from this for him, unfortunately. And I hate pronouncing games being over, but I can't imagine he comes back from this situation. He just This is a deck that just has so, too much difficulty beating Punishing Fire, Grove of the Burn Willis, as you see another 5-6 Tarmogoyf show mm -hmm. up. And it's certainly not one of the the decks that Morfolk wants to play against, and I think that's part of the reason it kind of fell off the radar a little bit. We were all kind of surprised at how Ben Lundquist was able to do so well with it this weekend because Jun was a deck that started rising in popularity because of Abrupt Decay, mm -hmm. because of the Punishing Fire combo. Uh, it, it did really well in the Open series, mm -hmm. so its success sort of pushed Merfolk to the wayside. Yep. And we were all surprised to see Lundquist actually choose to play that deck and actually do well with it. Yeah, top um, eight this weekend. Yeah, top eighting, dodged a bunch of Jun. Oh. Um, but here we see again exactly why, a perfect example of why Merfolk wasn't so popular in the past few Open Series simply because Punishing Jund has just such a favorable matchup with it. Yeah, you see both players kind of talking here as they're sideboarding. Derek kind of going, yeah, I can't ever beat that draw, I don't yeah. think. A couple Punishing Fires, Dark Confidant, Deathrite Shaman, 5-6 Tarmogoyfs. Let's, uh, let's try again yeah. in the next game. So we're going to take a look at Derek's sideboard first, see if he does have anything useful here. You see a copy of that was Jit. Along with two copies of Blue Elemental Blast, uh, Law 1, Cephalid Empress, one Daze, one Spell Pierce, two Cura Great Glass Spinner, one Tormod Script, two Relic of Progenitus, and four copies of Submerge. Submerge is one that is going to likely come in here. Of course, William does have Force in his deck, so Submerge is actually going to be able to be turned on. Mm -hmm. Two Cura Great Glass Spinner, a card that you would think would, would one up 
a punishing fire, which it does. The problem is that it doesn't one up abrupt decay. Yeah, this, despite uh, Cure of Glass ability where it counters the spell, abrupt decay gets around that. So mm -hmm. abrupt decay can actually deal with Cure Gla Great Glass Glass Spinner. And I think the Merfolk players are aware of this. Uh, ben Lundquist had it in his cyborg, and he sa sort of said, yeah, I know Abrupt Decay can kill it, but I don't really have any other options around that deck. You yeah. know, I know it's a bad matchup, so I figured I'll just have one of my cyborgs sort of hedge a little bit. Maybe I'll get lucky with it. Maybe they won't draw their Abrupt Decay. And thankfully for Derek, William only has two copies of Abrupt Decay, and he doesn't have any more in his cyborg. So there's a chance that Kira Great Class kind of Spinner might actually uh, be a factor in this matchup. Other than that, you see two copies of Blue Elemental Blast, but there aren't a ton of red cards over there in William's deck. You see Punishing Fire, you see Lightning Bolt, so, and I mean, Blood Braid Elf, you, you can, of course, Blue Elemental Blast, but... I mean, who wants to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's not really getting anything done, so the rest of his sideboard is pretty meh. You don't see a lot of cards here for the Jun matchup, and part of the reason you see this is because it's so bad, it's probably a matchup that you just would rather try to dodge. Yeah, uh, you... you Probably, I could see Relic and Tormod Script coming in, sort of deal with the Punishing Fire that way. Take care of the Death Rites of the Tormod Glacier. Exactly. Well. Uh, I think Kira Great Glass Spinner is obviously coming in. I, I don't know why I keep calling it Great. It's Kira Great Glass Spinner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is it. I keep adding Kite to it for some yeah, reason. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. So Kira is probably coming in. Tormod Script and Relic Progenitor is probably coming in. Obviously, Submerge pretty good on the play because he, he's going to try to tempo uh, William out as much as possible. Obviously, removal makes that very difficult, but it's still, it's the best plan that he has available to him. He can't be a control player, really, because yeah. just, there's just too much removal. Yeah. So, I, I like the submerges, I like the graveyard removal, I like Kira. I also don't mind the Jete. Again, Abrupt Decay, a very good answer to Jete, but maybe you just need to get lucky a little bit and hope they don't draw one of their two Abrupt Decays. Yeah. And Jete is still very good against creature-based decks. Yeah. Now taking a look over here at Pearson's sideboard, he's already got a very favorable matchup game one. You see him actually sideboarding in more cards here. If I'm Derek Smith, I'm going, really? You have more cards for me? And the cards you do see are just in your face. Yeah. Four Pyroblasts. Four Jeez. copies of Pyroblasts. Quite good against the Mono Blue Merfolk deck. Uh, besides that, he also has three copies of Mind Break Trap. Probably not coming into this matchup. He has three copies of Duress, which you would think against the blue deck you might want. But then again... This deck's so creature-heavy. It's, it's very creature-heavy, so I'm not quite sure Duress is where you want to be. He's got two copies of Nail Spell Bomb, which probably aren't coming in. Two copies of Surgical Extraction and the Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, I definitely like Maelstrom Pulse in, in, in the Cyber coming in, just because because of the Lord plan, there are uh, situations where you can actually two-for-one with the Maelstrom Pulse, yeah, you getting can, double Lords. Yeah, you can snag two Lords, depending on how their draw lines up. And if you don't, then it's just a Vindicate, which is perfectly fine. Exactly. So definitely like the Power Blast, definitely like the Maelstrom Pulse. Um, in his main deck, you know, I don't think he wants to board out any of his removal spells like Lightning Bolt, Punishing Fire, Abrupt Decay. Uh, Thoughtseize, I think you still want that because, again, it can deal with Force of Will. It's also a way of dealing with the Lord, so mm -hmm. don't want to really board that card out. Sylvan Library, it, it is, you know, sort of like a fifth Dark Confidant almost, so it gives you a little card advantage. Maybe he doesn't really need the Liliana's or the him to Torx anymore because that's not really his plan. He doesn't have to go after the hand. He yep. just overloads on removal. So maybe I could see Pyroblast and Maelstrom Pulse coming in for some number of Lilianas and him is just sh hedging some of those numbers a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think he decides we're into a deck that's just awesome creatures and Deathrite Shaman, Confidant, Tarmogoyf, Bloodbraid Elf, and then just a bunch of removal. Yeah. And I think that's all that he honestly really does need to do to get the edge here. Bloodbraid Elf is going to more often not cascade into a removal spell. Dark Confidant's going to draw him into either lands awesome creatures or awesome removal spells mm -hmm. and then that's just all he needs to have he doesn't really need to him his opponent and make him discard two cards just whatever whatever creature he plays just kill it yeah thought sees is really the only remo uh, targeted hand uh, hand destruction hand disruption rather he needs he doesn't really need to him to torque in this matchup that's more for combo decks or control yeah. decks Derek's deck really isn't either Liliana the Veil while it was okay game one it obviously forced Derek to force a will it not really where you want to be, particularly after the board, even especially on the draw. So as well with four copies too. You know, you, yeah. you, maybe you, you know, you, maybe you shave the two hymns and then two Liliana on the veils, make it so that you maybe have two to draw to, and mm -hmm. then you just side the word out, sideboard those out for the pyroblast, and you just get to work that way. Yeah, I, I would probably just go down to one Liliana and bring in the Maelstrom Pulse as well. Yeah, because so, you can snag two guys with that Maelstrom yeah, Pulse. Yeah, you don't really want a Liliana. You don't, you don't want to draw Liliana, but if you Blood Braid Elf into it, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, you don't yeah. mind that. But you don't want yeah, you don't want a hand clogged with Liliana, so you certainly Definitely. can't leave you know four or three of them in. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if he does choose a sideboard that way as both players are shuffling up here. For game number two, Derek Smith certainly does have his back against the wall, not only being down a game, but in a pretty poor matchup here right now.
Is William wearing a uh, Team Stream t-shirt? That's actually a Stream Team stream t-shirt. Team it's a nice shirt. shirt. Nice shirt. It is a I don't nice know. shirt. I don't know where he got that or who makes those, but whoever it is is a genius. Is he affiliated with you for somehow, or somehow? Or did he just win that t-shirt from, from watching your stream? I think he won that one. <laughs> okay. Oh. So uh, I'm not going to say who Cedric's rooting for because he's completely I'm impartial. Completely impartial. Although William is taking a mulligan here. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> So uh, wow. that's a little help for Derek again, uh, but unbelievable, unbelievable. William gonna mulligan aggressively to the two card hand of Punishing Fire Grove of the Burglars, <laughs> <laughs> and will still probably be eighty percent. Yeah, but uh, I mean it's tough. Like you know, as you said, Merfolk was a deck that w that we saw see a lot of success a couple of years ago, and then you know these things just came up to really destroy it. You saw you know Stoneforge Mystic Batter Skull be a huge problem for the deck. You see Punishing Fire Grove of the Burn Wills. People have moved that way to get a leg up in the Jun Mirror or against a deck like this that some people still do play. Punishing Fire plus Grove of the Burn Wills, you know, it, it's embarrassing when you play against the old combo deck. But when you're playing against some of the more fair decks in the format, your Stoneforge Mystic decks, uh, your Merfolk decks, some of your other creature decks, that's where it really does shine. Yeah, it's, it's crazy because it's one of those fair decks. We've been seeing fair decks all weekend, like... Esper Blade, Bug, Rug, mm -hmm. and all we've been saying is the fair decks are really good against other fair decks if you play them correctly, not very good against the unfair decks. Merfolk is one of those decks that's the opposite. It's a fair deck that's actually good against the unfair decks and not good against the other mm -hmm. fair decks. Mm -hmm. So, kind of a strange position to be in because in general, there are going to be more four deck, fair decks in a legacy tournament than an unfair, than an unfair deck. deck. Yeah. But, Merfolk is some of those strange uh, situations where if you do manage to make top eight with it, yep. they could end up randomly winning because they just get the great matchups in top eight. Yeah, I mean, this is a, this is certainly a matchup deck. As you said, if it plays against those combo decks and, you know, those show-and-tell decks and stuff like that, I think it's very happy. And if it mm -hmm. plays against the Abrupt Decay decks or, God forbid, the Punishing Fire Grove of the Burnwell decks, <laughs> as Smith is right now, uh, not so happy. As you see him daze a turn one death ride shaman here from Pearson, and he does have an Aether file, and, and, you know, again, I don't think that William minds that much that that's getting dazed as we see a Dark Confidant here. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good start for Derek. You get turn one Aether Bottle, which is huge for this deck. Yep. Stops the Deathlight Shaman from entering play, which could just accelerate William's draw. He even has a Dismember for the turn two Dark Confidant. So exactly where Derek wants to be. He can follow this up with a Lord. It looks like he even has a Force of Will in his hand. Okay. So he is going to draw a card here. Vile's going to tick up to two. Another Curse Catcher, an island. You see his hand of Force of Will, uh, Curse Catcher, and Lord of Atlantis. The problem here, and this is, you know, what Derek's doing and what Merfolk does, it, it really plays into Pearson's hand. Pearson's hands, excuse me, because all that Jun wants to do is one for one you into Oblivion. Yeah. And, you know, cards like Dismember, yes, you did kill a Dark Confidant. That's awesome. That's a one for one. That's all that they want to do. The, over the course of the game. So you do see that forcible in that blue card, and yeah, that might counter the next spell, but then he's out of cards, he's out of gas, and he's just playing at the top of his deck, hoping to maybe draw on a Silver Guild deck, maybe Stand Still, a bunch of different cards like that. So if, if we're going to play this one-for-one -one game, it favors Jund all day long. Definitely. And William actually has the card advantage engine in Dark Confidant. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was killed with the Dismember, but a card like Stand Still, that is a card that Der can bring Derek back into this game, but he only has three copies of it. Yep. Whereas Derek has four copies of Dark Confidant, and he even has one Liliana, though, perhaps, if he kept that one in. So either way, it's interesting that Derek actually has a lot of removal, but he can actually generate more card advantage than Derek can. Yeah. So he's, like you said, he's very comfortable with doing this one for one. And now you're going to see Punishing Fire take care of that Lord of Atlantis, Curse Catcher. Yeah, go ahead. Make me pay one more. I don't mind. And now what do you do if you're Derek? Do you actually pitch your Curse Catcher and force of will this? I think Ugh. you have to, right? Ugh. There's really, it's it's not something you want to be doing, but at least if you top deck a Lord, yep. you and can tick up your Aether Vial maybe, or you can sneak it into play in response to a, 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 another removal spell. Now he drew a blue card. Here he comes for four. Is that a standstill maybe? No, is that not a blue card? I thought maybe it was. Well, maybe it was, okay, we think it's like a submerge. A submerge. Okay. Okay. All right, so yeah, standstill's really, he, Derek needs a standstill there because that's the only way it's going to allow him to keep in, stay in this game. Yeah. Because Derek, William's just going to keep drawing removal spells and eventually he is going to get that Grove of the Burn Wills and get that Punishing Fire back. So now we see a Bayou and he is just going to pass the turn back here. So Derek is going to draw a card. Not sure what that draw was. As you see a Lightning Bolt in his hand, here's a Lightning Bolt to try to take care of this Lord of Atlantis. As the draws were submerged into Dismember, mm. so two two removal spells, but nothing that's going to add to the clock. Yeah, not not really what you want in this matchup. So, looks like Lightning Bolt is going to resolve here, unless Derek's maybe thinking of 
at I don't using know if, a submerge. I don't know if it can eat submerge's own guy. Yeah, like we'll bring done. up submerge on the screen for you because it's, it's probably not a card that uh, the average player is too familiar with. Although if you play Legacy a lot, it's probably something you've well, seen. So he yeah. is submerging his own guy. If an opponent controls a forest, which William does, you can play it for free, and the ability is put target creature on top of its owner's library. So he knows how valuable that Lord is. Decides to submerge it and put it on top of his library. Again, he saved it for the turn, but now he loses a draw step. So he yep. expended a card, and he took away his own draw step. Yep. And now here comes Bloodbraid Elf to the party. Speaking of card advantage. Yeah. Feel free to submerge that. <laughs> As we're going to see the Cascade yeah. trigger. Wooded Foothills, Graven Cairns. Wow. And <laughs> just a one-man to vindicate. Might as well just deal with your Curse Catcher, why not, for <laughs> yep. free. And attack you for three. Yep. And this matchup, ugh, it's just such a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's, it's very difficult <laughs> for the Merfolk deck. To, to deal with, you have to take these aggressive lines where like you're casting Submerge on your own guys. You're actually pitching Force of Will against a Lightning Bolt. Bolt. Yeah, you just have to take. It's these. just it's so you're, you're playing. You have to play this really strange and awkward game where you don't. You're dismembering a Blood Raid. <laughs> yeah. It's like now he knows he's gonna be top decking the Lord. It's you're just giving up so much to try to eke out a, a win. And you just have to get very lucky and hope that William just keeps bricking. And you see his hand, is, he is not bricking, as here is another Bloodbraid Elf. We're going to see a Cascader. I think I would have preferred William with Dark Confidant that turn, just because, you know, if you Cascade a removal spell, which your deck is just full of, or, or you know, or, you know Liliana the Veil. <laughs> the straight-up yeah. best Cascader. Which he doesn't, want, he doesn't want to tick up, because he has a Dark Confidant in his hand. At least I don't think he wants to tick it up. He knows, he knows Derek's card. Yeah, he knows it's the Lord. Yeah. So Lord's going to get Aether Valve into play. Yeah. Probably just pass the turn back. Yeah, you know, it's strange not to use the Planeswalker, and he's going to attack here. All right, so Derek can just choose to go after the Liliana next mm -hmm. turn, which is fine. Liliana won't die unless Derek draws another Lord. Yeah, this is forces him to draw a Lord right now, and I think he actually drew a Meryl Regery, which is like the wrong Lord to draw because you yeah. can't predict your... You have one three-costing card spell in your deck, and it's an island, so never mind. But he's going to attack that. William's going to draw a card... Is that so, another Bloodbraid Elf? No, it looks like it's a Niles. Is that a Spellbound? Oh, I think that... Is it a Spellbound? He does have copies of Niles Spellbound on his sideboard. Yeah, okay, that does look like it is a Niles Spellbound. And here's your Dark Confidant. So there's the Dark Confidant. Right, we're going to tap a Niles Wasteland. Spellbound. And yes. Yeah, for the Niles Spellbound. Okay. So there's Niles Spellbound. So he can uptick it now. Yep. Both players have empty hands, so it doesn't really impact anything. And... Uh, I believe that draw step may have been a Silver Gill Adept. Not 100% positive, but we'll find out what it is in just a second, of course. As you do see Derek reaching for the Aether Vial here. Considering maybe a second Lord, Silver Gill Adept. Yeah. So there's and your Silver Gill Adept. Adept. So here's your Cantrip. Yeah, that's going to draw an island. And it's pretty easy to forget here, as you know, you do see the back and forth. One thing that uh, you forget with Bloodbraid Elf, you know, of all the insane things that it does do, it's pretty easy to forget that, you know, it does attack for three, and you see Derek is at five. Yeah. It doesn't even feel like he's at five. It feels like he's, like, 18. Yeah. Yet, you know, Bloodbraid Elf, the haste, three power, everyone always just forgets that, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting a spell, but you're also getting an attacker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so there's Tarma going off for Dark Confidant. Derek going to draw a second card for the turn. And so you see his like hand, like, lightning, lightning Bolt, that, and oh, a wow. Wooded Foothills. So, so a fantastic hand. He's going to clear the way. I think he's going to attack for he's lethal, gonna, He right? should be able to attack for lethal. Yeah. Sack your Liliana to force Derek to sacrifice his creature, cast Lightning Bolt on one of the creatures and attack for lethal. Yeah. He even can just go upstairs with Lightning yeah, Bolt, too. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he does. As long as he Derek has no cards in his As long as he doesn't target himself. Yeah, don't target yourself or one of your creatures, and you are fine. Yep, and so there's your lethal attack, and there's a handshake. So William Pearson with Punishing Jund getting probably the best possible pairing playing for top eight. Defeats Derek Smith and his Murful deck, and he'll be moving on to the top eight. Congratulations to him. It must be a nice feeling. You're back against the wall, you have to play it out for top eight, and you get the absolute best matchup imaginable. Yeah, and, and just doing it with like the nicest shirt I've ever seen, too. Very nice, yeah. Really, really just impressive.